Okay, and last but not least, certainly is Crystal. So Crystal, where are you calling in from? I am in Paulsbo, Washington State near Seattle. Okay. Yeah, um, so my question is, I run a, a 10 week live um, Zoom course called Creative Self Care. It is based on Ayurveda um, and it's geared towards women and helping to support them through realistic applications of Ayurvedic pr principles in their lives. Um, my next course is beginning at the end of April and I'm in my third round so far. Um, and I'm wondering what would, what is, you know, with the context of what I have set up so, so far, what do you recommend as the best way to, to get fresh raw people into yeah. the course, like five to 10 people? Okay. Whew, there's a bunch. One, I've got an ebook on this topic called, um, the hell is it called? Uh, the Art of the Full House. Number two, I've got a, a two video playlists on YouTube, one about filling up workshops, I think, and the other one about launching. And so there's a ton of just content there that you can dig into. Okay. Um, the, but the, the best way is you reach out to the people who have already been through the courses, which you may already be doing, but you, uh, and there's a few ways to do this. So I'll give some options. One is you just send an email out to everyone and say, hey, if you're getting this email, you've been in my course before, I'm launching it again. Here's some swipe copy you can use. Like here's something you can just cut and paste and a, a meme you can put on. And if you could tag a few people, I'd be grateful. You know, the people who've been in your course before are gonna be the best spokespeople. They're gonna do a better job of selling it than you could. Um, if you wanna get a little bit more intensive with it, you could um, pick, you sit down with, so you've got, I don't know, you've got 20 or 30 names at this point and you sit down and you go through all those names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just, and, and person by person, you probably, because it's a period of time, you probably know a bit about them or you have some sense of your vibe with them. And you think, okay, who are the ones that I'd feel comfortable asking for a favor from? Who are the ones where I feel like there's that kind of rapport and connection? And you send them each an individual email. And the email basically says, look, I've got this thing coming up. I'm wanting to reach new people. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to get on a little Zoom chat with me um, in the next week or so. We can go for coffee if they're nearby. Just, I'd, I thought maybe you might have some ideas on where I could reach people. Mm -hmm. You know, would you be open to a conversation like that? And a lot of them will be. And then you're just like, yeah, where do people like you hang out? Like, are there some, where, what are the hubs? And you just engage in a conversation and it's good to give them a list of types of hubs. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I may have a blog post about this on my website under the hub marketing section of the articles, but you know, there's people like, are there any key people that we could talk to? Are there any events that, you know, if I were there or had a workshop there or had a table there that these people would be at, are there groups that they're a part of? This could be Facebook groups, associations that uh, are there, is there media that they follow, you know, online or offline? There's blogs, podcasts, uh, that type of thing. Are there complementary businesses, you know, that do something, it's not competitive with me, but would be a nice fit with what I do that you can think of that the people who spend money with me would all, like, where do you spend money too? Where do you, there's that. And then there's uh, the competitive businesses. There's other people who do things very similar to you, but slightly different niche. And there could also be, yeah. So you can go through each of those categories and just say, can you think of anything in any of these categories? Like, where would we find more people like you? Because you're great. And then at, at the end, too, once that's done, it's like, and is there anyone you can think of personally who you think might enjoy this? Not as a hub, but just as an individual. Is there any friends, family, uh, colleagues? Um, so if you do that, you probably get a ton of ideas from the people who've already been in the course. And then of course, at the end of the call, you're like, thank you so much for taking the time like if I can ask one more favor, if you'd be willing to spread the word about it, the thing that's most helpful for me is if you can post it and I can send you an email with you cut and paste and edit as you like. But if you can personalize it and then if you could tag some people you know, this is just such a huge help. So it's just, we're just asking for help and being overt about it. There's no need to be sneaky about anything. We're just like, I need help to fill this thing. And then also in the lead up to it, it's good to reach out to the people who've already signed up and just mm -hmm. say, hey, there's this many spaces left, you know, uh, if there is a limited number of spaces. And, you know, if you know somebody, you know, sometimes it's nice to go through these courses with other people you know, because you can hold each other accountable or support each other along the way. And so there's this many, you know, here's again, cut and paste text, you know, feel free to share it with people you know. 
um, or just, hey, you know, there's still some time, no limit on the number of people, but last minute favor, you know, if you, if you know anybody, please, if you can help spread the word, I'd be grateful and that kind of thing. So those are some ideas off the top of my head. Yeah, that's really interesting that you say that because so much of the marketing stuff I've seen out there says to create this, the scarcity mentality where, you know, you don't, you wouldn't say to people who are in your course, like, oh, I need help to fill it. Right. Because you, you want to, you want them to think that like your course is so special and valuable, right? Like that. Um, so yeah, that's a really, that's really interesting perspective and, and refreshing. But, you know, I'll say this, the scarcity is a real thing. The universe is scarce. We have one planet. There's only so much water. You know, the, there's only so many trees. It's, so as, as ecologically, we're coming to understand there are limits and real scarcity. Same with some of our courses. There's, we got 10 spots. That's how many I can fit in my living room. That's what it is. So that's, that's a genuine scarcity, not a manufactured mm -hmm. one. And so we can let people know that. And that's important to let people know because hilariously, as much as people are like, I hate all the scarcity of marketing, they get pissed at you for not telling you how few spaces were left. Mm -hmm. What? I would have signed up. I can't believe you didn't tell me. I was going to say, oh, what? If I'd known, I've had people, and maybe you have too. They just like, hey, like you can't win. So, um, so the key is, I don't know, we just be human with people. Yeah. And we say, look, this is the deal. I need some help. Um, and, you know, you know, thank you. If you're able to, I'd be so grateful. It doesn't make us seem less successful. It just makes us seem more human, more relatable and um, smart, frankly, because people who get on a call, they're like, if they get off that call with you, it's like, that was really smart. Mm -hmm. Man, that was a good idea. I had a lot of ideas for them. Huh, I should do that in my business. Um, yeah, this whole posturing as if we've already got it made is um, unnecessary. That's, I just, that's all I'd say. You don't need it, as far as I can tell. Because what do people care about? Do they care that you are confident? Nope. They just need to be confident in what you're offering. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they don't care if you feel like you've got it all together. Like if you have a chiropractor who cures your migraines consistently and they're a basket case with, with dating, and they're really anxious with that, you don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm sorry for your troubles, but thanks for the, the work. Um, all they care about is like, is this something I want? Is this relevant to me? Do I trust this person to deliver it? Is it a good deal? And that's basically it. And if so, they're probably gonna buy. And if not, they won't. Um, but we can we can afford a lot more, um, I think, candor with our clients. And could it cross a line to where we're leaning on them and it's desperate and it's, there, I suppose there's a tone, there's a vibe. I mean, if you get on the call, it's like, yeah, oh my God. I mean, just like my, my, my program is just, there's only like two people in it and I just I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I mean, what, is, what the fuck is wrong with these people? I mean, they need this in their life. And anyways, uh, do you know anyone? Because I'm just like, I don't know if I can pay rent. Like, this is too much that's dumping on people but it's um you know i got this from lynn twist who wrote a book called the soul of money this is my she never said this but this is what i got from it there's basically two gaps we can invite people to help us fill there's the scarcity gap and the sufficiency gap the scarcity gap is the gap between your survival uh, uh, your struggle and your survival so for if with fundraising, you know, for a nonprofit, it's like, we're just, it's just so hard right now for our nonprofit. And, you know, we just are, we're going to have to lay people off and it's just a hard world. And if you could just give us a, a, enough money for a stack of pancakes that would get us to the end of the day, you know, it's, it's like, it's not, nobody wants to help you fill that. Mm -hmm. Especially if you get that message again and again, we see this with businesses too. You know, it's the business that's like, hey, if people could come down to our store, we're just, we really need the community to come together and support us. You get to do that once. Mm -hmm. Twice, the community is wondering. Third time, the community is like, stick a fork in them because they're done. It's over. You know, the, the, the vultures are circling at that point. But then there's the sufficiency gap. And the sufficiency gap is the gap between what you have and what you want. And there's no struggle in it. You're just saying, 
look, oh man, I got this great course coming up. I'm so excited about it. And there's two people signed up. It's the greatest. I'm so excited. They're both the loveliest people. And uh, I would love to have 10 people, you know, and I thought you might have some ideas, but you know, man, I'm happy with these two. I'm sure more will come, like there's no burdening people with it. You, we can come from a composed place where it's just, I'm just so happy with what I have. I'm so grateful for it. And I have a vision for more. And if you can help, that'd be wonderful. And if not, it's all good too. Yeah. So yeah, I may have overplayed that last one a little bit, <laughs> but you get the idea. We don't, we just don't need to um, make it so heavy and, and needy. Uh, we can just talk about it like the human being and like, yeah, man, I'm struggling. I don't know where to get people, but maybe you have ideas and it's okay if not. <laughs>